Let's do it. Let's do it. Slay seven. Scream. Scream. Ah. 1996's Scream. Wes Craven's Scream. Not 2022's Scream. No, but like, listen, I saw this movie in theaters. In 1996, I was nine years old. I did not know what I was getting myself into. I was scared fucking shitless when I saw this movie. I'll never forget, like, because I'll never forget that, you know, being a kid, especially nine. And I think my mom was dating her second husband who would become that maybe at the time. And, um, they were going to go to the movie. You know, I obviously threw a fit nine years old. I was like, I want to go see a movie. I want to go see the movie too. Uh, right. Did not know what I was getting into. Uh, had I known, I probably would have been like, yeah, fuck that movie. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. Right from the jump too. This movie is one of those that like was right from the jump. Yeah. It was open no up. One. Yeah. You open up with that kill on uh, Drew Barrymore. And I was just, you know, seeing her up in the tree, all slashed up, and her parents, they're screaming and shit like that. I'm just like, like, oh, okay, you know, like, because I'm pretty sure, I wonder, I don't think that was the same year that Blair Witch came out. What, what did you say it was? 90? 96. 96? No, I want to say Blair Witch was 99. I could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. So this is even before then. So this probably was probably one of the first, yeah. like, legit horror Blair movies Witch. that I saw in theaters. And yeah. I was fucking... I'm sure. Uh, my first experience with Scream also scared the shit out of me because uh, I was home alone. I was home alone the first time I watched Scream. So, you know, like when you're home alone and like the first time you've ever seen this movie, you're watching that opening scene with Drew Barrymore where she's at her house by herself getting the phone call. Um, I actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think I shut that shit off. I don't think I finished it while I was home. Especially uh, if you get if you get a phone call while watching it. I stand corrected because what happened is I ended up watching all of them. Uh, I ended up watching because the fourth one was getting ready to come out at the time, I believe. And so I ended up watching all four of them uh, around the same time. And all, all four of them really, really did it for me. I was like, this, this is a solid franchise. I mean... Uh, it, it definitely like is you know it's got a lot of humor i mean it is a satire in a lot of ways uh but it's like also genuinely scary um similar to one of my favorite horror movies of all time cabin in the woods i mean you know this kind of was a precursor to that of you know here's some here's a horror movie that's self-aware you know yeah that, that knows it's a horror movie that knows the rules of horror movie what uh what horror fans expect out of it and turning it on its head in some ways. It's one of those that kind of like established those rules weirdly though, because like before that it was like, you know, they were the unwritten rules of horror movies. Mm -hmm. This movie came out and was like, you had your movie geek character that was like legit. I'm going to. Right. Which that was always my beef with the fourth movie was like, the fourth movie tried to be too much the first movie, but like for the new generation, that was like the soft reboot to the franchise. You know what I'm saying? That they was trying to do. But and I think, I think point, you know what I mean? Like they were kind of poking fun at reboots around that time. Yeah. yeah. But like, that's that, that was the, that was what to me fell short. Cause it was like, don't try to be, mm -hmm. Because it's almost like they were like, all right, you know, what worked in the first one was it when we were making fun of horror movies at the time. So let's dial that up to 10 now in this reboot and let's make fun of reboots while rebooting. And then let's let. And then it was like every character was the same from the first movie. You yeah. had your movie kid and all this stuff. And it's just like, had Which they I, had, had they the done, time. yeah. Absolutely. Had they done the the even the tongue in cheek, let's make fun of the reboots and all this stuff, but like have a totally different like cast of characters within this, probably would have been a little bit like better for me on that one. Like yeah. for me with Scream, I think the first two were solid as fuck, but the third one eh, and the fourth one. Yeah, it's been so long. Like I said, the I think honestly the last time I watched all of these movies was when the fourth one came out. I believe that was 2011. Um, so at the time, that would have made me, I would have been 
uh, either the ending of my sophomore year or beginning of my junior year when this came out. Uh, and uh, <laughs> like I said, I mean, watching them for the first time, I was like, damn, th these are some scary ass movies. Like, uh, I, I was genuinely frightened by these films. It definitely leaves you with that, like, I ain't trying to be left home alone <laughs> vibes for a little while. You're like, take me with you. <laughs> when your parents go places, you're like, yeah, I, I fucked up. <coughs> No, like I said, I, I, I loved him and I, I liked, you know, the the killers being uh, the boyfriend, the friend, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I loved in the sequel. It was the mom of one, you know, the, the one of the killers in the first one. And then spoilers, spoilers. Yeah. If you haven't seen these by now, where are you at? Um, but you know what I'm saying? It was the mom and, and then, and then the, the, the new protege that she could grab in and kind of blame everything on. And that, I think that's. That's kind of where, like, because I got to see all these movies while they came out. And right. when the third one came out, and it's like, oh, Sydney, I'm your brother. And it was like, where the fuck you been, bro? Like, get out of here. Like, come on. And, you know, it's like, now we're, we're trying. Yeah, like I said, like, I, I don't remember those as well. I do remember liking the second one uh, quite a bit. And which one, was the third one where they're, like, on the, on the movie sets and shit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jay and Silent Bob show up at one yes. point. Right. Yes, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which the third one is still like for what it is, it's 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 all right. But like I I like that, like how it was like the movie set. Yeah. And I because those movies, you know, the it did play a lot into it. So I, I enjoyed that aspect of it, but it just like yeah. to me that the writing fell short on like killers and trying to tie them all together and all this and that. It's like, well, as somebody who, you know, grew up being a big fan of Scooby-Doo as a kid. Like, you know, the big part of Scooby-Doo was, like, always trying to figure out who it was. You know, like, who who's who's under the mask? You know, who's the monster at the end of the show? And Scream has that, you know? Like, it's the adult version of that. It is, and I think that's, that's really, what... You know, it's like, I love shit like that. I love the, like, whodunit, like, you're trying to figure out the mystery. I love well, a good... You for know. them at the time that this movie came out in 96 that was like that wasn't a thing you know what i'm saying freddy krueger never revealed who he truly was he's fucking freddy krueger you know and jason Voorhees didn't have to because he's fucking jason yeah, Voorhees. Yeah. and then you had this movie come out that was a slasher just like the rest of these but this underlying like, like little murder mystery kind of thing underneath it of who is it who is it who is it that sprung this whole new genre of slashers of like i know what you did last summer and you know all kinds of movies like that that had the same sort of concept of well who's under that mask like who's the real it could be anybody within this movie it could be the main character right. um so that you know that was definitely something that i really liked about it and something i'm hype about like the fifth one about to come out uh you know where are they going to go with it i've i've you know seen here and there rumors of, it's it's one that I've been seeing like news is starting to like come out for it, but I I'd rather just be surprised uh, for this one. I'd like to just go into it blind because, uh, like I said, I, I I dig the directors they got for this new one. Um, they made Ready or Not uh, two years ago, I believe. I think it came out in twenty nineteen, um, and it was a pretty solid movie. But they also directed a segment in the first VHS movie uh, that is my favorite segment in that movie. Uh, it's like the Halloween segment that ends the film, and I, I always dug that a lot. Then they made Devil's Do, and we won't talk about that. We just won't, we we won't talk about that at all. Uh, but Scream, yeah. What I also like about Scream, I guess as a franchise, is that unlike all those slashers that came before it, it like it always maintained its sense of humor, but also maintained its like scariness. Like it never like just started getting goofy. You know, it never threw that out the window and just started getting ridiculous uh which is refreshing you know again it's one of those things where it's like they know what like they know that they're horror movies they they know that they're sequels and they're very self-aware but they play that to their advantage and they they twist things up and i always appreciate when a movie does that that's why Cabin so, in the Woods is one of my all-time favorites here's some scream facts for you i got some scream facts, facts pulled up scream was originally titled scary, scary. movie yeah hence the the parody spoof. yeah um which was one of my first uh uh like uh 
ex- like that was like my first exposure to like Scream before Scream was Ghostface in Scary Movie. Oh, what's up? You know, like yeah. You know, if now, if you were there for it, you remember. <laughs> you oh yeah, remember that, that one I literally I, just watched recently, and it's it's good. <laughs> I didn't those movies. It's been a minute. Uh, They're funny to go back and rewatch now because it's been so long. Well, I'm sure. But, I am curious to see how they hold up over time. They're good. Because um, three and four came out when I was younger, so I still fuck with those. Five was atrocious. <laughs> So basically, they said that uh, Scream was partially inspired by real life events. There's a fact I didn't know. Okay, apparently the guy that wrote Scream um, was watching. Uh, yeah, Williamson guy uh, watching Barbara Walters said he got so scared that during a commercial break, um, he heard a noise and went and started searching his house. Went into a living room and a window was open. He'd been in the house for two days. He never noticed the window open, so he got really scared. He went in the kitchen, got a butcher knife, and got out his phone and called a buddy of his. And uh, David Blanchard, his friend, started asking him about scary movies. And he said, one thing led to another. I went to bed that night so spooked I was having a nightmare. And I woke up like three or four in the morning, and I started writing the opening scene of Scream. I like that. Yeah, that, and that, that was a very fun fact. Apparently, he only wrote it over the course of three days. That's what's up. Uh, they said it was going to be impossible to sell with the amount of blood and gore within it. I did see where he tried to shop it around to like several directors that hung yeah, around. Yeah, like Wes, and... Wes Craven was not the first choice. Sam Raimi was a, one of the first choices. Yeah, Sam Raimi, Robert Rodriguez, uh, somebody else was on that list too. I, and I was like, damn, that's a, a solid list. And I saw that none of them really knew what to do with the movie. But... <laughs> Follow-up fun fact, Robert Rodriguez uh, did film the footage for Stab, the, the in-universe movie, uh, when, when Scream starts getting real meta. They said Reese Witherspoon was originally approached to play Sydney, And so was Brittany Murphy. Um, All right, keep it. Said so Drew Barrymore cried legit crocodile tears on set. Uh, they said Wes Craven told her real life stories about animal cruelty during filming to keep her upset and crying. So those were real tears that she was crying. <laughs> um, said so Wes Craven donned the iconic ghost face costume during that opening scene. Uh, when you also- appears in the movie as a janitor dressed up as Freddy Krueger. Yes, yes. Uh, it says when Casey hits Ghostface in the head with her giant-ass phone, she actually hits Wes Craven. It's the only time in franchise history that Cra- Craven has donned the nightmare-inducing mask. Uh, the voice of Ghostface was never allowed to meet the actors in real life. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had a voice that voice goes I, I didn't know that either. I also learned that tonight. Um, here's a fun fact. Uh, with us filming what we're filming, they used around 50 gallons of fake blood on set during the whole thing. Yes, I believe uh, the other fact I saw was the, uh, the corn syrup. They've got a line about how movies would use corn syrup and dye it red. And then some of the final scenes of the movie, that's exactly what they do, is just use corn syrup dyed red. Nice. Uh, Rose McGowan dyed her hair just to match uh, Campbell's hair. Mm-hmm. Nev Campbell's. Correct. Um, Tell me why I didn't realize that was Rose McGowan <laughs> until I was watching it this time. Because I'm watching, I'm like, who's this actress? The blonde yeah. hair dude. It really threw me off. It says that uh, McGowan wasn't actually stuck in the doggy door from the iconic scene. It was a big fat lie. She was so small that she kept falling out of the doggy door. So production had to nail her shirt to the inside of the garage door to prevent her from falling out. Um, <laughs> and then it says, and thereby eliminating her chance first to show. One, is the first one where she gets killed in the garage door? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. And then the last, the last fact is just a dumb little fact for anybody that likes the dumb little facts that Nev Campbell and Matthew Lillard dated while they were filming this movie. That's a fun fact. I have Sydney a, a, and Stu. That's messed up. <laughs> here's a here's a Chase and Shep fun fact. 
Uh, Slay 7 was originally supposed to be The Craft, which also starred Nev Campbell. <laughs> True. But we swapped it for Scream. Because we weren't feeling The Craft. Starring uh, Nev Campbell. And then another little fact about Matthew Lillard. Uh, I once knew a guy. Uh, he was from Danville. Um, he was a professor out at UCLA. And he taught uh, a lot of... He, he taught Cal Penn. He taught Jack Black, Tim Robbins, a few other actors. Um, and he was directing uh, Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. And I believe he said it was something like there were roles for 12 men and 13 audition. And the 13th guy who didn't get the part was Matthew Lillard because he thought he was just some burnout stoner dude and didn't think he, he had any talent and shit like that. Um, and so he, 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 Matthew Lillard did not get cast in this play, uh, but would go on to become very successful. And coincidentally enough, we, you know, successful as one of the most famous stoners of all time, Shaggy Rogers from Scooby-Doo. So I find that so that's, gonna, that's what I was about to ask. Was this pre Shaggy or post Shaggy? It, yeah, it was pre, it was pre Shaggy. <laughs> this was pretty early. <laughs> He's still in college. Maybe that was the drive he needed to become what he was. So, right? Honestly, that's why I love that story so much. When he told me that story, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Again, as a Scooby Doo fan, I really, I appreciated that story. <laughs> so, uh, what what would you be given score wise? What can I screen? Um, I don't know because you know, admittedly, I haven't finished it. Um, I have seen it before, but it's been a minute. So, like, to give it a score fairly, I feel like I'd have to actually, like, finish my current viewing of it. Um, so, with that being said, without it being finished, I'm going to go with 7.5 uh, to reserve that, you know. But it, it could be an 8 for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a good one. I mean, it, was a, it is a game changer. It is a game-changing movie uh, that, you know, I, I think some of the best horror movies are those that like play on the rules of what came before, you know, similar to Cabin in the Woods, where it's like it knows what it's doing and in the process reinvents the genre, you know, by embracing the genre. Uh, and I, I love the, I love any movie that does that. And Scream was one of the first to do it. Uh, so I'll, I'll say 7.5 for now. I feel I feel that I was gonna go eight point five, uh, mostly for the same reasons, uh, of it being iconic, it being, you know, a movie that sprung a whole heap of movies afterwards. You know, scary movie, even you know the parodies and whatnot. Um, it's had a, it has a TV show. It's got its own. You know, we're getting the five people want it back. Uh, the ghost face is iconic. People still dress up as ghost face for Halloween. He is one of those, like, you know, we were talking uh, when you were talking malignant and you're like, oh, I could see this guy being a new, you know, Freddy Krueger and stuff, you know. And I was like, man, there hasn't really been people since then. You know, Ghostface has been that one that that since like the 80s and all that stuff came out that was on now. Yeah. With all those guys, you know, with Pennywise, with Chucky, with Jason. Now you got Ghostface in there, um, so just the just the impact alone could it have been a little better? Probably, I guess so. Anything could be a little bit better. I mean, it's definitely a very clever. Movie. It is, and I think it's one of those that even now, again, you know, you know, we're in twenty twenty one, so you got to remember the time period where we didn't have phone numbers pop up when you called and all that good That's stuff. Right. You know what I mean aged a little wonky uh because i uh you know when he first is like questioning uh billy or whatever and he's like what are you doing what are you doing with a cellular device <laughs> and he's like everybody has one and i'm like yo for real though like everybody does have one of these things back, <laughs> you know, back yeah. then we didn't uh, though another fun fact that i read uh about this movie is that four <laughs> id uh like tripled in use after the release of this movie a ton of people started getting color ID after this movie dropped. I think after that movie dropped was when we realized that you could do star six, seven and block your color. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's classic. It's iconic. It is. 
if you haven't seen Scream, do yourself a favor and watch it. You will probably just like he did the first time, sit down and be like, "I'm gonna watch all four of these." Yeah. This shit's pretty lit. It's pretty fun. It's uh, and get ready for that fifth one because yeah. I think the trailer should be dropping soon. So yeah, the movie comes out in January. So now, now is the prime time to just sit down and watch. It. And honestly, it is one of those things that if you did, because I don't think we actually did say how this movie ended. Uh, so, like, honestly, if you haven't seen Scream, um, it's like it's it's dope. Like, you're, the first experience watching Scream is like the best. <laughs> like, it's definitely the the ultimate experience seeing Scream for the first time. So, I'm yeah. jealous oh, yeah. jealous of you guys who get to, to watch it for the first time. So. Me Enjoy. too, because 1996 was a long time ago, and that was the first time I watched it. So, right. 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 but I feel like it scared me a lot more than than it would have now. So, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow midnight. Tomorrow, Peace. for Slay Eight, Smooches Deuces.